What's up guys? Welcome back to Cool Fred's Garage. So today we're gonna play um, with this Chevy for a little bit. Um, I'm gonna cold start it, show you guys um, what's going on with it. Uh, it run pretty good, it's just something I'm trying to get sorted out on there. Um, there's like a little tapping noise uh, after the engine runs and warm up. Uh, it'll start off normal. It'll start off running normal, nice and smooth and everything, but as it warms up to temperature, um, I've kind of pretty much kind of pinpointed what I think is wrong with it. Uh, I did take some things apart a couple weeks ago and um, swapped some things around and uh, I adjusted the, the valves and things like that. So I was able to get it improved a little bit, but... Um, it's still doing it just a little bit. So I'm going to show you guys what's going on. And I'm going to try to uh, see if I can get that straightened out. So I'm going to show you guys what's going on. And then I'm going to show you guys uh, some of the parts I ordered. And see if we can get this thing taken care of. So thank you guys for checking out Cool Fred's Garage. If you like any of the videos, any of the content, please like and subscribe. Hit that like button for me. Subscribe to the channel. Um, and uh, if you got any questions about uh, anything, just shoot me a comment. So uh, here we go. All right, so I'm about to go ahead and start this bad boy on up. So. Um, this is a 1973 Chevrolet Impala, uh, 73 Chevy. Uh, it's got a 400 small block in here uh, that's been built. So it's got the original, uh, it's got the original block, but everything in it been changed. Um, it's like a, it's, it's got an Eagle crank, scat, uh, five seven rods, and it's got, uh, it's got the shorter pistons. Um, so it's, it's 30 over, 406 small block, and I got the Fitech, uh, EFI on here, so it's the, uh, Fitech Go 4, I believe. So, uh... Uh, that's a little bit about the car. Uh, I I'll talk about it a little more. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and cold start it. So, uh, that right there is the fuel pump that you hear running. So, a lot of times, I'll cycle it a couple times, let all that fuel get up there. Um, and a lot of times, it'll start right on up the first try. So, uh, that's what I like about the fuel injection. And uh, I'm going to back it out a little bit just because I'm in the garage. And I don't want all them fumes and stuff. Um, it's, really, it's really not too much of any fumes. Uh, after it run for a little bit, but cold start, like all that raw gas until it kind of uh, settle down. So it don't normally, when you first start it up, it'll start off idling high, and then it'll kind of, you know, slowly come down to the idle that you got it set at. So, so this right here, uh, these are the Dakota digital gauges that are here, in here. So I've had these in the car since 2015. Nice and smooth and everything, and it'll settle down. And uh, as it warms up, it'll kind of settle down to idle. Uh, 
So I do have the one belt drive on here, serpentine belt drive. Uh, that, that came off of a later model uh, Chevrolet truck, like a 91, 92 uh, Chevy truck. I just put all new components on it, like the alternator, AC compressor, water pump and everything. So it runs pretty good. But uh, we're going to let it settle down when it warm up. When it warms up and the engine settles down, we'll kind of see what it's doing. All right, guys, so I went on and put my Summit racing fender covers on. Uh, you guys probably know uh, from that Ford, that 1972 Ford Grand Torino that I was working on for one of my dad's good friends. He had a set of these on his uh, that he ordered, that he had on the Ford, and I liked them so much, man, I had to go ahead and order some. So I got me a set. These come in a set left and right, so they kind of, uh, they got this little area here, so they so it's kind of a, a left side and the right side. They come in a pair. So, uh, all right. So this right here, what I was kind of talking about, as um, as the engine gets up and warmed up and starting to warm up a little bit, let's see what the temperature is on this bad boy. So uh, it's probably around like. Um, like 165 maybe, uh, maybe 165 degrees, even though it says 150 there, but as far as the gauge, it's somewhere, yeah, probably, uh, yeah, like 155, getting close to 160. So around that temperature, uh, you start kind of hear like a little tapping noise coming from this side of the engine. And, uh, and as the engine warms up, it kind of gets louder and louder. Uh, like I said, I, I was able to do some things to it a few weeks ago. I had to dive turbo off, I adjusted the valve and everything. And um, I adjusted the valve and everything. And uh, I was able to get it a little bit quieter. But, uh, It still got a little tapping noise. That's kind of crazy because I'm seeing like the header, these are ceramic coated headers, but that last one on uh, cylinder, uh, I never really paid attention to them in the dark. But over there on cylinder, uh, that would be seven. The last cylinder on this side over here, you can kind of see them glow a little orange there. So. But I, I never really paid attention to a ceramic coated head with the feet. Uh, actually, it shows up pretty good on the camera, but I guess I just never really paid attention at nighttime to see. Because in the daytime, you really don't see them glow like that. This side is doing the same thing. Kind of but they do get hot, but the ceramic coated, they, they hold the heat a little bit better than the black headers. That's one of the reasons I switched to them. So you can hear that tapping noise right now. Kind of get progressively louder and louder. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let this thing cool down a little bit, and I'm gonna take that valve cover off and show you guys what I did. All right, so let me kind of cool down right now. So I'm gonna do that just okay. Come on. I'm gonna think about these small black shavings back on real quick easy. I'm just gonna stuff out of my son's drops. I'm gonna need some screws over here in that for a train there. That little car right there that y'all heard is one of my neighbors. It's a 240Z they got over there. So, this is pretty much this evening time after work. I'm just trying to do this real quick. Um, but yeah, sometimes it's like everybody else starting to go to sleep. And they're probably like, man, these guys starting up these cars and revving their engines. Well, I don't be revving my engine, but. Uh, 
you know the exhaust is a little bit kind of deep and mellow it's not extremely loud on this car uh the exhaust on this car used to be pretty loud when i had those uh flowmaster 40 series bufflers i had to get rid of those bad boys so i got the dynamax um ultra flow on here now Dropped a couple things. Alright, so I got a few more nuts and stuff to retrieve so I can make sure that um, I don't got nothing crazy going in the engine. I gotta figure out where that other one went. I'm missing like one or two. Actually just one. So I'm gonna figure that out real quick. Alright, so I finally figured out what happened to my screw and also what happened to uh, oh, that other like that kind of like the valve cover um, it's like the little hold down support so it's up on this header here so let me get my magnet see if I can get it out the car may cool down a little bit so there we go all right so here we go um i'm just gonna pull this valve cover off so they got got these little studs on here this makes it a little tricky right, so there we go so that bad boy is off of there I'm just gonna set it down there for right now. But uh, pretty much so far what we got. So uh, just on initial inspection, I don't have my flashlight right now, but you can tell that that all of the rocker arms are oiling like they're supposed to and stuff like that. So everything's looking good from that standpoint. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some cardboard in here to kind of keep the oil from deflecting and I'm gonna start it up and let it run and uh, let you guys see what's going on. All right, so what I'm normally trying to do when I'm just, well, I got the valve cover off to keep oil from going everywhere is I'll just cut a piece of cardboard. So I just pretty much just measured the length of uh, kind of the cylinder head, kind of like right in here and right in there. It's around about maybe 17, 17 and a half inches. And uh, I cut some cardboard out of a cardboard box. So I'm gonna lay this in there. And, uh, uh, and then I'll be able to start the engine and kind of pinpoint what's going on. All right, so I wanna pinpoint another thing that I did. Cause last time I did this, I actually had uh, one of my zip ties that's kind of sticking up like that. Uh, it was kind of touching down there on the exhaust tube. It kind of started to burn a little bit and give off a smoking smell. But uh, so that my spark plug wires and stuff like that are not digging you down. Cause I got these, um, I got these hold downs. So I've also positioned these up. Make sure I got pretty much anything out of the way that can contact the headers. Um, so I don't get a burning smell or anything like that. Because uh, when you're working kind of like this, you want to be careful with oil sloshing over and getting on the head of tubes and stuff like that. Because that can cause a burning and possibly even a fire. So, uh, let's see if I can move this out of the way just a little bit so we can kind of... So, uh, I'm going to start it up and let it run. All right, so how I initially pinpointed uh, where the noise was coming from 
um, that, that little singing kind of tony noise that you hear right now that's my that's my control box for my electric fans so uh, basically the box is on and uh, after one minute it'll go out uh, the fans are not running because they haven't reached the required temperature but I also have a fail safe switch in here so when I hit that switch they'll just take off and run but uh, let me see before the time expires actually the time just expired so basically if I turn the switch on it'll turn the fans on if you guys hear the fans real quick so those are the fans and when I turn the uh Ignition off the uh, they'll turn off once the timer goes out, but uh, so that's there for maybe a good almost 60 seconds and then it'll go away. All right, I'm just gonna wait till those fans turn off. All right, so those are off. The only thing y'all hear there is that blower fan that I got over there on my on my workbench. All right, so um, pretty much how I determined what's going on. So the noise is coming from this uh, cylinder one, um, the cylinder one exhaust rocker. So this is controls the exhaust valve. Um, so that's the noisiest one. I've tried adjusting it and everything like that. Uh, it seems to have a little bit more play than some of the rest of them. Um, even though it's adjusted, it's actually a, adjusted fairly fine. So I swapped the rockers from, uh, I wanna say, I, I believe I swapped the rockers from here to over there. And the noise is still right here. So how was able to determine the noise was I kind of got this hose right here. It's basically like a, I believe this is, I'm not sure if it's fuel or vacuum or not, so. But it's like a 3 8 hose and I'm able to, I put it up to my ear, put one end up to my ear and the other end kind of hovering over the valves until I heard which one was the loudest one. So I definitely know the problems right here. So uh, I took them apart um, I adjusted them. Um, so, I mean, I know they're oiling good and things like that. So I know that uh, everything with the cam bearings and everything like that should be good. Because uh, I was just in this motor in 2018 and I put new cam bearings in there and kind of just refreshed it a little bit. Um, I'll talk about the history of this engine uh, later on. But, um, um just real quick um so the, yeah this is the a 400 small block board 30 over it's a 406 it's got afr aluminum heads on there i'm also talk about those uh briefly later on uh so that's another problem i'm gonna try to solve while i'm uh attempting to fix that uh, so what i suspect is going on is that i have a collapsed lifter uh, right here on cylinder one the exhaust and I have parts to fix that because uh, that's pretty much the only rocker that's making noise I think I thought that I heard maybe a little bit on this one which is the cylinder three uh, exhaust uh, but it, it wasn't as bad so I did order two lifters to put in here um, Let's see. So uh, another thing with these AFR heads is that um, to me the guide plates that come with them, because some of the like uh, it's a little hard to tell, but it's like some of the some of the rock arms seem like they're centered, and then some of them like this one here seem like they're just kind of like slightly off a little bit not a lot but a little bit so uh, especially this one right here the number that's number seven intake 
So it's a little bit kind of off the edge on that side there. So the way these guide plates are, that's one of the things I kind of picked up on is that uh, you can kind of, you can get one valve centered. Like let's say you get the intake centered, the exhaust to be off slightly. So I've ordered some parts that I think uh, that's going to help fix that. And I'm going to show those to y'all later. Um, I'm trying to see if there's anything else I need to talk about while I'm over here. But yeah, so basically, it, these are the Scorpion 1.5 ratio rockers. Um, I did have a different cam in here. Uh, I've been in this engine a few times. Uh, the first time uh, uh, I did, uh, like when I was getting out of high school, I did a mile bill. And then um, I decided I wanted to run a little bit better. So um, I put it out maybe about a year and a half later. Put these AFR heads on here. And uh, this is the second cam that I have in here. So I'll talk about that later. So it's a Lenati Voodoo cam that's in here now. And I did have some 1.6 ratio rocker arms on here. And now I'll switch back to the 1.5 ratio rocker arms. I switch back to the the 1.5 ratio rocker arms um but i did uh another thing because i was trying to correct a few issues um so back in the day i did i have a cam that wiped out a load um i want to say that was probably like 06 07 probably like late 06 and it was a crane a crane z cam so i was able to warranty that out but put the new one in uh broke it in everything went pretty good but uh that cam later on had some issues too um and i broke a few rocker arm studs and things like that so um but the culprit of that that i found uh back in 2018 was when i last had this thing out is i i had a few bad cam bearings so um so now this thing's running pretty good but the only issue i'm having is this lifter tapping uh right there so i suspect i got a collapsed lifter um the other thing i did when i went back in here the last time i did upgrade the i went from the 3 8 studs to the 7 16 studs which are a little bit more beefier they don't deflect as much so so i got uh these poly locks actually come with these rocker arms so all that's beefed up and upgraded and things like that. So um, uh, I'm going to show you guys the parts I got and then show you guys, explain to you what the plans are. Um, so I'm going to be replacing two lifters. I'm going to replace the uh, cylinder, cylinder one exhaust lifter and I'm also going to replace the cylinder three exhaust lifter. Uh, so that means the intake manifold has to come off um, I don't have to take the belt drive off uh, to get it off but I do have to drain the coolant and stuff like that um, I do have to temporarily uh, disconnect um, my throttle brackets and stuff but I'm I'm, uh, I'm probably just gonna take the throttle body and kind of just maybe just set it off to the side because I got the I got an overdrive transmission in here and I got all this stuff dialed in. This is like multi overdrive stuff right there um, to work with the Fitech. So I got that stuff dialed in pretty good and I really don't want to mess with it a whole lot. So I'm going to try to uh, just somehow maybe either unbolt the throttle body and just kind of lay it over to the side or whatever or do something to kind of keep it out of the way. And I'll snatch the intake off and. Uh, get it where I can get down in there and um, then uh, change out the lifters all right guys I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this video up for now um, but what I'm gonna do is in the next video I'm gonna talk a little bit more about the car and talk about uh, the engine and some things I've done to it and a little bit of, of the history on this engine and uh, just a few things I've done to it over the years. So uh, thanks for checking out Cool Fred's Garage. If you find any of the topics or the things um, 
that I do helpful, please like and share the video and subscribe to the channel. Till next time, you guys take it easy.